In this video, I'm going to show you the most comprehensive guide to set up your NAN instance and using MCB tools in your workflow. I'll first start by explaining why do we need to self host NAN and then walk with you step by step some of the best options to self hosted. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you how to install notes from the community as well as using some examples to demonstrate MCB client to usage and server trigger examples. If that's something sounds like you're interested in, let's dive into that. So here's our few reasons. Number one being much cheaper. NAN has two types. The first one is the cloud-based service, which is typically charged using a monthly subscription. As you can see here, the cost is not cheap and it could quickly add up to a considerable amount going forward. So this leads us to a second option, which is the self-hosted version. Now NAN is an open source software, which means anybody could have obtained a copy and installed on their local machine. So by doing so, this allows us to have a lower recurrent monthly cost and the ability to have unlimited workflows. Now, second reason is the security. Now, most of the company users actually have on-premise data storage policy, and they don't want the sensitive data to be exposed to third party. And using a self-hosted version can guarantee a self-control of data. Now, the last but not least, the extended capability. So using a self-hosted version allows us to install packages from the community, which included the capability of executing local MCP servers, which, can, which I'm going to demonstrate to you guys at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around with that. Now, the last feature is the local commands, which gives us the ability to execute something locally specific to our workflow, which may be beneficiary to some of the users. I hope that gives you better insights about self-hosting NAN. And now let's look at some of the popular options to do it. The first option is to use Docker, which is 100% free, but then the limitation is that it's only hosted on your local machine and you cannot access the server elsewhere. The second option is to use a remote server, such as Railway, and then the cost is typically around five US dollar per month, and as long as you have the URL and the access rights, you can then access the server with your choice of computers or terminal. The third option is to use Runpod, and this setup is for advanced users and typically incurs a much more expensive cost. But then with that, this allows us to assess GPU resources, which is very useful if you need to run local AI models such as LLMs and video generation models. And now I'll explain the setup in individual sections, so feel free to skip to the section you're interested in. I'll first talk about Docker. So let's head to app.docker.com and then you should be able to see Docker desktop here. So just go to the download tab and then choose your operating system. So for me, it's gonna be Mac. So I'm just gonna pick the right chip and then just wait until the download finishes. And then after your download finishes, just make sure you install them and then open the Docker desktop on your computer. And once you have download, installed and open Docker desktop, make sure that you also have an account and also sign in. So after you have signed in, you should be able to see your profile icon on the top right corner. So after you have done everything, what we need to do next is to go to the search bar and search for NAN. So this is the version that we need. So it's NANIO slash NAN. So we just need to pull the image so that we get the latest version of NAN and wait a couple of seconds. So after the pull is finished, now we click run and then there are a few optional settings that we need to configure. So for container name, we're going to use NAN and then for port, we're going to use 5678 and also for environmental variable, we're going to use this one, NAN community packages allow to usage. I'm going to explain what that means later on, but please just follow along and also set this value to true. And everything is ready. Now we just need to click run and let the image to be spin up. And once it's do so, then the container will show up, which show us the latest image for the Docker. So we just need to go to localhost 5678 by clicking on this. And now we have a brand new NAN instance. So this is how you set it on Docker. And we're going to come back to a setup owner account later when we talk about MCP. Okay. So now secondly, I'm going to talk about Railway. So Railway, it's a hosting provider and it allows us to deploy web applications. Now, if we look at the pricing, the hobby plan starts from five US dollar per month, which is a great deal for our use case. So go ahead and make an account and subscribe to the hobby plan. And once you have done everything, you should be able to land in this homepage. So when you're at the homepage, we're going to click on add new and then the search bar will pops up. And what we need to do is to search for NAN 
and just look for the template that has the most credible signal. So for example, this one has 52K downloads. I'm gonna pick this one and deploy. And now we just need to wait a couple of minutes to let the changes to be applied and then our instance will be spin up. Now, after a couple of seconds, you should be able to see four options here. So we're gonna click on primary and deploy the image any end. So now it's leashizing and just like another couple of seconds to wait it to be finished. Okay, now the server is active. What we're gonna do here is that we need to go to settings and then now the URL for the server pops up. So just click on that and you should able to see your brand new NAN instance here as well. And then again, we're gonna come back to set up account later when we talk over MCP. And now just going back to the railway settings real quick. And here you can also configure a bunch of things such as environmental variables. Now I'm gonna add a new variable, which is any end community packages allow to usage and then set the value to true. So just follow along for now and I'm gonna explain why we need that environmental variable later. But for now, just click add and then redeploy the entire service. So just wait until it finishes and then your instance will be up again. So just a quick walkthrough about the other settings as well. You can also you know, configure resource limits here, such as the CPU, the region, et cetera. But for now, I'm just gonna leave everything intact. And this is how you set up Railway in just a few clicks. And then the third option I'm gonna talk about is to use RunPod. Now, just a reminder that this is for advanced users and only choose this if you need a very high computational resources for your NAN workflow. So go ahead and sign up an account and logged in. And once you have done that, you should be able to see the homepage. And if you're a first time RunPod user, make sure that you go to the billing tab and load in some credits before you can actually use some of the GPU or CPU resources. And you can do so by inputting 10 here, which is the minimum amount, and you can use either card or cryptocurrencies. So once you have loaded in some credits, we're gonna go to the ports tab and pick one of the computational resources that we need. So since most of the run port users actually want high computational power, I'm gonna use a GPU as an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on RTX 2000 ADA. And here, then a template will appear. And what we need to do is that we need to click on add the template and just expose the 5678 port here, which is the port that we use to assess the NAN instance. And it's very important. Now, and then on the public environmental variable, again, we need to paste this any end community packages allow to usage and set the value to true. And I'll explain why that is needed later at the end of the video when we talk about MCP server. So just please follow along for now and then set the overrides. So once you have set everything up, then we'll click deploy on demand and just wait a couple of minutes for it, for the pods to be ready. So now the pods is running. So now let's go ahead and click on connect and then what we need to do is that we need to go to the web terminal by clicking on the start and open it. So the next step we're gonna do is to install the NAN on the port. So what we're gonna do first, we need to go to nodes.js.org and then we need to download node.js, which will then be used for installing NAN later. So just make sure that you are on the Linux and also using NVM as well as NPM. And what, we need, what we're gonna do is to copy the entire script here and just paste it in to the terminal and wait for it to finish loading. So after it finishes, we're gonna go to docs.nan.io hosting installation npm and copy this command npxnan and again copy and paste here and wait a couple of minutes or seconds to finish. Here it is, it's finished loading. So just make sure you see this editor is now accessible via this local host and it signifies that the NAN has been installed. So now when we go back to the port and then again click on connect, you should be able to see this HTTP service 5678, it's ready. So if you click on that, now what we see is that a brand new NAN instance using the RTX 2000. So you can have access to this GPU resources in your NAN workflow now. So that's how you set up on RunPod. And now in the remaining time, I'll talk about how to install community nodes and using MCB client tools and server truck examples. So I'm just gonna go back to one of my local instance spin up on my local host and just set up an account here. So I'm just gonna use Grace, uh, which is my email, and then use my name and set up a password. And then just follow along the entire, you know, like onboarding. And then what we want to do next is that once you're in the workflow setup, we'll then click on this thing, settings, and now you should be able to see community notes in this tab. 
Just a quick reminder, you won't see this option in the cloud version, so make sure you are using a local host or self-hosted version when you're following this step. So just click on community nodes, and now what we need to do is install a community node. And then I'm gonna use the MCP client to community node to use an example. But what you can do is that you can also click on browse and then see a bunch of other supported nodes here. So I'm gonna copy and paste this and just paste it in here, check, check this and install. And just a couple of seconds, then it should be installed. And then now if we go to the GitHub repository of this and just quickly go to the installation section by searching it. So if I go back to here, then it actually tells us that it's mandatory to set this thing, NAN community packages allowed to usage in the environment variable to true in order for us to execute the MCP tools. So that's why we showed this step in the previous setup demo. So I hope you understand that. Now, okay, so going back to here, this is basically how we install the nodes. And now let's go ahead and just start from scratch and use some of the MCP server. So the first thing we need to do is to set up a menu trigger. So once the trigger is done, then we need to click on add and then just set an AI agent. I'm gonna tidy things a little bit up. So we're removing that node and the AI agent is set up and we need to connect to chat model. So for that, we're gonna use open AI and you will need the credentials to actually use OpenAI model. So make sure that you have a OpenAI API key by going to platform.openai.com slash settings and opting an OpenAI, OpenAI key here. So once you have done that, going back to the workflow like this and just connect to your account and just pick whatever model you like here. Now, more important here is that we actually gonna connect to some MCB tool as an example. So we'll click on tool. And then what we're going to do is to go on to search for MCP client and make sure that you use the other two section and click on this MCP client tool with a package here, meaning that it's from the community. So that's exactly how we can then execute MCP server commands and use it. So just click on that. And then the first thing we need to do is to set up the credentials of the MCP client. So what we need to do exactly here is that if we go to model context protocol slash servers, then this gives us the access to a bunch of servers uh, referenced here. So I'm gonna use one of them as an example, which is the Airbnb. And then for that one, we don't need any API keys, which is one of the best examples for educational purpose. So you're going to Airbnb, and then what you can do here is that it shows you a bunch of tools in that MCB servers. And what's more importantly is that you need to go to this commands section and then copy and paste all of these but now in the UI, you actually don't copy and paste all of them, but now click on cre create new credentials. You need to copy individually the commands, arguments, and environment. So what I'm gonna do here is that copy this MPX in the commands tab, paste this in, and then for arguments, I'm gonna paste everyone, everything one by one. So like dash Y, and then this thing, and then ignore robots text in here and save it. So now this is basically your Airbnb MCB server trigger commands. So just save that. And what we can do here is that click on test step and then it should be able to list all the tools from this Airbnb MCB servers like this. And now how do we actually execute it? So let's go ahead and click on add tool again and use another MCP client tool. But this time we're gonna use execute tool. And for the tool name, you will need to select from one of the examples that is shown on the list. So what we're gonna do here is that we'll do an Airbnb search, click on this, and for two parameter, we'll just let it define by the model. So as in, you know, like when the AI obtained your search information and then it will then execute it. So I'm just gonna quickly run you through one of the example. So, Let's go back to the AI agent and use define below. In the prompt, I'm just gonna say search in Airbnb in London, save it. And now if I click on test workflow, what it's gonna do is that the model is gonna reason through the MCV client and then just execute this to using the tool name I specified. So it should be able to return you a bunch of results in London because I specify that in the user prompt of the model. And now basically, this is how you use MCB client tools in the community version. So just go ahead and you know search a bunch of other servers to test with. Some of them may require an API key, so it, you know a, a more tedious setup.
But then this demo just gives you a better idea on how you can make use of these powerful tools. And then the last thing I want to talk about is how to use MCP server trigger. Now, just a quick explanation of what that is. Basically, an MCV server trigger it allows us to expose a SSC endpoint from the NAN workflow, which then the NAN workflow become our MCV server. And you can assess this MCV server through your favorite desktop client, such as Claude or the other AI agent that supports the connection. So I'm just going to quickly show you an example. So this MCV server trigger, you can start this node by going to add and just search for MCP server trigger. So this works on both self-hosted and the cloud version. So feel free to just use any one of them. So I'm just going to click on connect the tools. And then I'm going to connect to a Gmail tool, which already have an API key set up for that. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try sending an email from my cloud desktop once this MCB server is set up. So I'm just going to let it all defined by the AI models. And OK, so this MCB server, it's now connected to my Gmail account. And I'm going to use the production URL, just copy this one, and make sure that this workflow is active. So once this thing is set up, what I need to do is to go to Claude. And then now if I go to the settings here, you will see there is a developer options here. You should be able to see this edit config options here. And clicking on it will expose to a JSON. And now you should open it with your favorite editor. So now just make sure that to copy and paste this block, which I'll just like post in a comment below. Now this block is very important it's for the cloud desktop to identify the NAN server connection. So to copy and paste this one. The only thing you need to change is this URL. Now this URL actually comes from the MCV trigger production URL. So make sure you copy a few times and then going back to editor, copy and paste this thing in and now save it. And now you close it, going back to the canvas. And what I can do here is to restart Claude. And going back to the settings, like this, developer, and make sure that the NAN is actually up and running. So that means your MCB server is now being connected. So if I go ahead and just start a new chat here, and then let's just try send an email to Grayson saying hello using MCB tool. And you should be able to reason through and trigger the correct MCB tool. So as you can see here, you can need to like choose the access right here and now Claude will do the job. So if I just go back to my email account and you can see that the email has been successfully sent by Claude. So this is basically how the MCB server trigger is working. This is the end of the tutorial. I hope it gives you a better understanding about self-hosting NAN and also using MCB servers in your workflow. And again, if you find this video useful, please like and subscribe, and I'll post more contents like this in the future. See you next time.